The Jeep Gladiator has been around for a little over a year now and there are some nice builds out there. But are there any as nice as this? This vehicle right here is ready for overlanding, rock crawling, just about anything you can throw at it. And today in this video, we're gonna meet with the owner. We're gonna take a look at all the cool stuff he's done to it and find out why he built it the way he did. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon. I'm Brad and I'm here today with my good friend Taylor. Man, thank you for coming out today, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, I am so excited to look at the details of your build that you've been doing over the last year. But before we dive into talking about some of the specifics of your truck and why you did the things you did, there's one thing I want to mention and then there's a big question that I want to ask you. First thing is, we were in this exact spot almost three years ago filming Iron Man JK, which yes. was your awesome JK that you had. And dude, I love that Jeep. And the people out there have been ecstatic about it. You don't have it anymore. I don't. And you traded in for this and started all over. Yeah. Why? I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people have asked, uh, but for me, I, I build Jeeps for a living. I have for, for 15 years and it really is like my passion is to, to build these things up. So you get to a certain point like I did with my JK where it was either, you know, spend 30 grand on a motor swap or uh, build something different. Cause that's, that's fun for me. Lately, my wife and I have been doing more of the overlanding and camping and, you know, destination trips, wanted to go to Yellowstone and Wyoming and Colorado and Idaho and all those places. And not that I couldn't have done it with my JK, but all that gear takes up the entire cab of the vehicle. You fold down the back seats, you load it up, and you're left with nothing space-wise. Not my dog. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Wrangler. <laughs> but uh, having a truck bed has really opened up uh, the possibilities of what I can carry. I mean, I load up all my gear, and my cab is completely open. Right. You know, the three rows in the back seat are still open. Yeah. So that's that's been really really nice. Um, not a single thing wrong with my JK. And I look at photos of it and I, I honestly like the looks of it better right. a lot of times. I think like, you know, aesthetics wise, it was in my eyes, my Jeep was perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, so it wasn't like a, I'm over this thing, let's sell it. It was on to the next one, you know, so. Well, uh, look, I, I think there are a few similarities, just the fact this says Iron Man on the side and it's silver. But from there, there's a lot of things that are so much different than your JK. I mean, yeah. this thing is really, it's purpose built for a little bit different use, just like you said, the overlanding. So let's, uh, let's hop around to the front and let's just go from front to back and let's talk about what you've added and why you've done it. Let's do it. The first thing I noticed walking up to this Gladiator is just how tall it is. We'll talk about tires and suspension in a minute, uh, but I want to talk about uh, what you got going on on the front here because there's some stuff that I haven't seen until you pulled up here today. Can we just talk through bumpers and lights and winch and the cool stuff you got on the hood there? Yeah, for sure. So uh, starting out with the bumper, it is our Rebel Off-Road Summit Series uh, mid-width bumper. It's got uh, a lower skid plate that's optional. More so for the Rubicon guys, um, just because it covers that sway bar disconnect motor down there. And then the uh, bull bar here is bolted on so that we've got three different options. So we've got the low one, which is here. Mm -hmm. We've got a mid one that's there, and then we've got a stinger that's up taller. I just wanted something, you know, low and subtle right above the Warren logo. Okay, and this is steel? <clears throat> that's a steel bumper. Okay. Yep. And then uh, it takes um, your typical two by two light. Uh, we use the KC G34 primarily. I love the cutoff on that light yeah. and it's you know daily driver friendly and all that. Um, I've got the Warren Xeon 10S Platinum, okay. which is their wireless winch. Um, it's awesome. It's the cherry on top for sure. Right uh, now, in this you, bumper. you went with the 10 and not the 12. Are you pretty happy with that decision? I am. I mean, in all reality, you know, a lot of guys, especially, you know, the overlanders, a winch isn't being used all that often, right. but um, I'm happy with it. And uh, I know that I'm never going to be pulling dead weight off a cliff and you know, a 7,000 pound vehicle, <laughs> yeah. 10 should be fine. 10 should be good, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, God willing, I'm not coming off a cliff and yeah. need, needing that power. But okay. uh, yeah, then I've got the Factor 55, which is uh, the Haas here, the Flat Link E, and then their little rope guard. Got a couple worn Epic D-rings. 
Um, so yeah, I really like the package. I obviously, I color matched it. Yeah. Uh, even though typically it gets scratched before it even gets on the Jeep. Like I, I just love how clean it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love the color match look on it. And you did that with your JK, and I'm so glad you decided to do it with this build too. It just it really makes it stand out a little bit more. I like it a lot. Yeah. You swapped the headlights. I did. So, uh, I mean, any any Jeep owner knows that Jeep equips these with candles for yeah. headlights. So uh, I didn't get the LED package because I, I went with somewhat of a base-ish sport. Um, because I didn't need axles and those kind of things. So, so, it so, came you, with so this is ones. not a Rubicon. This is not a Rubicon. Uh, and my logic behind that is I'm going to take off nearly every component that makes a Rubicon a Rubicon. Yeah. So I'd rather save that money and put it towards the meat and potatoes, right. you know, axles and things like that. Yeah. So um, I swapped out to the uh, KC's, the Gravity Pros, which this light is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd take this over that stock LED in a heartbeat. Sure. It's, it's awesome. It's super bright. So that's a great, great light. I'm really, really happy with it. And then I, uh, I put some Pro Six pods up and up on the A pillar. Um, I, I love that light. I mean, I don't. I love that old school, right. new school look. You know, you got a bright light, but it's still around because round lights are on Jeeps. You know, and that's it. Really flows. I think it looks really nice. Yeah. Very bright light. So I'm happy with that. Now, there's some unique things up here on the hood that you don't see on most Jeeps. What, what do you got going on up here? Yeah, so this is a, a newer product from S&B. So s and is known for making their cold air intakes. Okay. And uh, on factory Rubicons, this is a an aftermarket DV8 Rubicon uh, replica hood. Okay. But on Rubicons, they've got that, you know, plastic cowl piece or whatever you want to call it. And... Uh, and it's not functional. No air goes in there. I mean, you can feel the heat coming out of that right now. Um, yeah, for sure. But that scoop right there is hooked directly to the cold air intake okay. from S&B. So, um, whereas this one is just venting, which I don't know if you can feel heat there, but it's, it's pumping out here. Oh yeah, you can so, definitely feel the heat coming yeah, out. So yeah, so that one has like a ram air that goes straight to the air box here okay. and it's sealed. So I honestly put those on thinking this is, you know, they're gonna look cool. It's, it's a hype thing, it's gimmicky. But I honestly can tell you the second I touched my gas pedal, and it sounds salesy, but the throttle response was like insane. Really? Different. Yeah, because you got the inlets over there, so it's barely drawn air. It takes a sec right. to get through, but that's feeding it directly in huh. ram air. So nice. um, I'm really like impressed with those. I, I like how those work, and just getting more airflow through to the engine and getting that heat out. Um, is super super beneficial, so I'm happy with those. Well, and you're getting yes, you're getting colder air, and you've got a lot of weight going Correct. up. You know, when you're going up the passes and stuff, I imagine that's got to help with the the temp as you're climbing up hills Absolutely. and stuff too. So yeah, okay. What's this cool plate you got up here? Yeah, so that's a uh, a little solar panel. It's a 30 watt, so it's not a ton, but it's made by Cascadia 4x4. They're out of Canada, and uh, it I have it hooked up to my Genesis dual battery, so that is. Um, currently hooked up to my auxiliary battery. So okay. where my fridge and my lights and stereo, all that stuff is, is run to. And 30 watts isn't a ton, but if the job of that solar panel is to keep it topped off, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, because if you're on a, you know, a multi-day trip and you just park that vehicle for a few days, um, you know, even with a dual battery, you run the risk of, of that battery dying. So when it's, when it's sunny, it actually helps. It keeps it topped off. It nice. keeps it in that like 13 volt range. And uh, yeah, just a simple little upgrade. It's got a smart controller under the hood. Okay. Um, not that it would, 30 watts is gonna overcharge it, but yeah, it's yeah. a nice little little addition. Cool. Uh, quick question, you said this is a DV8 uh, hood. Is this, yeah. I guess I know the answer as I'm tapping it. This yes. is not- Do you a, have a magnet? This is not, <laughs> uh, this is not fiberglass. Yes, and if you would like to lift it, you will verify that it is not <laughs> aluminum fiberglass. It, it is a steel hood. Okay. Uh, so. What else yeah. you got underneath the hood going on? Uh, like I said, that Genesis dual battery kit, I didn't have that on my JK yeah. and I was super limited as to how long I could run my fridge or lights or any of that kind of thing. Compressor, the vehicle had to be on. And in the case that you were to, you know, your starter battery dies, you can jump them with a button under the hood and, uh, and link those two and start it up. So that's a, that's a great, that was the first thing I did to my Jeep. Okay. Did it myself, took yeah. twice as long it's as it should It's a little bit of a project. That's yeah. all me. Yeah. That's me. So. Uh, but otherwise, uh, stock underneath there. Yeah, so I've got that that intake from S and B, and then I have a Borla exhaust going out the back. Okay. Uh, because you know that's how power works. You got to breathe in faster and get yeah. it out faster, and you make more power. So pretty happy with that on long trips. Not too loud. 
No, not at all. I actually, I have their quieter one because that's not what I was right. trying to do. Once again, this isn't like, you're not trying to brag about your V6 going down the street. <laughs> uh, you just want it to sound a little bit tougher and, and give you a little bit more oomph. So. Well, the good news is, is uh, this has got that eight-speed transmission, which your JK yes. did not have, and so that makes going through the power band much easier, yeah. uh, especially pushing these big, big tires, which yeah. let's go over to the side and talk about them. Let's do it. All right, man, these are some of the biggest tires uh, out there though, that you can put on a Gladiator. But before we talk tires and suspension, uh, what is that decal you've got on the side there? This guy? Yeah. So that is uh, a trip that we went on end of July, into August. And like I said, I, I really built this Jeep to do those longer trips, Colorado and Wyoming and uh, Montana, Yellowstone, all that. And uh, I had the opportunity with, with work, Rebel Off-Road, to uh, go on a 12-day trip through Colorado and Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. And we, uh, we took the, the harder route. So we started, um, we drove on road to Durango, Colorado. And then from there, I would say 80% of our driving was on dirt. So, you know, the Canadian border is something like 1,400 miles away if you if you were to drive straight there. Um, we made that trip about 3,000 miles. Yeah. I honestly saw just the most beautiful parts of this yeah. country. And there's so much more, uh, as you know. But we planned for probably six months. That's cool, man. And it was... It was straight up the trip of a lifetime. Yeah. Hope to do it again, but if I didn't, that it was sufficient. It was that awesome. Yeah. Just hanging out with that group of guys uh, around the fire every night. You set up camp, and we'd all, just like you do, you split up dinner duties. Right. And you just sit there, and it's like, you know, getting away from, yeah. you know, the real world and the city. and Dude, the joy is just coming through you, man. You can tell you just yeah. had an awesome time. <laughs> Dude. Okay, Seriously. so you did that trip mostly yes. on dirt mm -hmm. with these tires and suspension. Yeah. Let's, yep. let's talk in a little bit about what, what rubber do we have here? Sweet. Yeah, so wheel and tire wise, I, I wanted to run Nittos. I ran Toyos on my last Jeep and I loved that tire. I, I genuinely did. Um, wore great. You'd get 50, 60,000 miles out of that. Um, but I wanted to switch up some things. Obviously, there's so many similarities on this build that I needed to I needed to differentiate it a little bit instead of just making the exact same Jeep in a JT. Right. So uh, I, midway through owning my JK, I wanted 20s. But I wussed out and I'd go back and forth and I'm like, nah, people are going to give me a hard time <laughs> about 20s. And on a truck that's this long, yeah. I'm going to run 20s. I'm, I'm going to go for it. I think it's going to look awesome on a 40. I'd done them on, on builds in the past and I loved the look. So I went with uh, Nitto's 40, 15, 50. So she's, she's a wide sucker. Yeah, um, super wide. And this is their trail grappler, which I, I personally think that's the most friendly mud terrain that you can put on a you know daily driver. Um, it tracks straight, it's quiet, it lasts a long time, it works awesome. It's a harder rubber, so getting yeah. flats is, is a thing of the past with this tire, I think. Um, Tread life's pretty good too then. Yeah, I mean, I, we've had people that really push this tire on yeah. 35s and 37s, and they'll get 60 plus thousand miles out That's of it. That's pretty good. Whereas if you're buying a, a different tire that only lasts you 15 to 20, even though it was cheaper, you're going to buy that tire an additional two, three times. Right. So that makes that tire astronomically more expensive. So I'm I'm really, really, really happy with that tire. It is thick, so you really got to air it down to to see that tire yeah. squish. Yeah. Um, but that's just fine. And now, um, what, what, uh, this is a 20 inch rim, but what correct. is it? Yeah, so this is Trail Ready Beadlocks okay. HD20. Okay. So that's a, a full beadlock wheel. Um, they do their new roto uh, molding of the, of the wheel. Okay. And uh, yeah, I've, I've always loved their style. You don't see them everywhere, which is really cool yeah. to try and do something different that you don't see, you know, the same wheel over right. and over and over again. Um, and I, I love this wheel. I just love the, the detail of the little windows and that yeah. um, part of the wheel, powder coated black, of course, paint, paint match the rings, sure. um, just to break up that big yeah. black hole of tire and wheel. Now it's a, so. it's a 20, uh, but you have a 15.5. Is this a 10 inch width rim? This or? wheel is nine and a half inches wide. Nine and a half, okay. Yeah, they make a, they make a 20 by 12, um, but that's just got a deep dish and, and with these axles already being so wide, yeah. I didn't need it wider. Yeah. This thing sticks out right. more than it doesn't. Um, so yeah, I've you know got the right offset in my opinion. 
to go with these axles. Okay. And speaking of axles, yeah, what's what's holding these things up? Yeah. So uh, I I went big on the axles. Um, I went Dynatrack. The uh, you know they're the difference between their sixty sixty package and their sixty eighty package is like two grand. Hmm. So when you're when you're spending that kind of money on axles already, in my opinion, spending two grand more was just like kind of a no brainer. Do it yeah. once, never worry about it. Um, I know that I don't need an eighty um, with the stock engine for now. Um, and 80 is overkill, like, but so like is for now plug. You yeah. just plugged in there. But, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely overkill, but as is so much of what we right, do to our right. Jeeps, you know, yeah. you, you don't need everything. Uh, you sure. want everything, but, um, so yeah, I've got their pro rock 60 up front. Okay. It's got 488 gears in it and an ARB locker. 488 with forties. Knew this was coming. Happy with that? No. <laughs> so, for you guys, I've made the mistake myself, so you don't have to. But um, I was one of the first people to put axles and 40s and this kind of thing on a JT, not not tooting my own horn. And I think I even talked to you about it before I put these under. And I said 488s, and you said, "Are you sure?" And I was like, "Yeah, man. Like, I, I got this. Don't, <laughs> like, I I'm the Jeep builder here." Um, but after I added this amount of, of rubber and wheel and cargo and all that, um, it, it's undergeared. It's not terrible, but my choice was 488 or 538. I figured 538 would be overgeared. I would have gone 513, but they don't make it for the 80. Mm. So okay. I, I yielded on this side thinking I'm on the highway more, the lower RPM, um, get that thing putting. But the thing is it hops in and out of seventh and eighth, uh, any grade it's in sixth. Yeah. So. I think in the near future I'll I'll probably bite the bullet and go 538s. It's you know it's a sore subject because <laughs> I just put gears in this and I need to do it again to yeah. get it where it should be. Well. But it's not bad. Um, it it honestly drives great and like you said that eight speed transmission. Right. Any JK owner that's gone JL JT mm, is just yeah. floored at how much better that Absolutely. that vehicle drives. Yeah. So I am I'm ultimately really really happy with it. Um, believe it or not, the brakes that come on this axle. Um, on 40s, it stops better than it did stock, nice. which is like absolutely incredible. I was I was really surprised uh, because this is a big mass of tire to try and stop and get going, frankly. So that uh, that works great. And then the rear axle is their their Pro Rock 80, which that's as big as it gets sure. as far as you know yeah. a production. You know, you're not gonna break axle. that thing. Though. No, and uh, so that's that's plenty plenty strong. Like I said, it's overkill. All right, let's talk about uh, what suspension we've got underneath here. So. Yeah. So uh, once again, that's our, our Rebel Off-Road Recon kit. Okay. This is our uh, our Overland kit that we've dubbed it. All right. And the reason we did that is it's a coil over up front and it's a spring and shock in the mm -hmm. back. Why we did that is a spring carries a load better than a coil over yeah. does. Um, on our on JLs, we typically offer a coil over. It's gonna articulate more. It's your rock crawling vehicle. Um, so we went spring and shock in the back. It's a King 2.5 adjustable coil over, rides awesome. So that's why we went with that yeah. in the back. Uh, putting a coil over in there, you really gotta, you have to stiffen it to keep that payload and tow capacity. And when it's unloaded, it rides stiff. And the, pa the, the space that you have back there for a coil over isn't big enough to put something right. noteworthy. You know, you fit an eight to 10 inch coil over with no modification. And frankly, you can make more travel out of a standard um, spring and shock. Yeah. So the reason we go coil over in the front is because down travel and suspension is made by how long that shock is. A shock is your limiting factor in your suspension. You can't just put the longest shock you know because your spring will fall out. Right. So a coil over, that can't happen. You can fully droop a coil over, it can be off the vehicle, springs can't go anywhere. They're held in um, and, and you can make all the droop you want with a coil over and not worry about the springs right. coming out. Uh, it's a dual rate, so you got a softer spring up top for kind of your, your daily drive in and, and soaking up the little things. And then that bottom spring really carries the weight um, and holds the ride height and the vehicle. And if you hit something harder, that spring comes into play. Yeah. Um, it's got these little compression adjusters down here, which make such a big difference. Yeah. I mean, if I load up the back, I'm going to stiffen that shock because yeah. I don't want it to just, you know, bounce and be all washy. So you stiffen that and it takes away body roll when you've got that extra weight. Um, if you're going faster in the desert or on washboard or something like that, where the suspension's coming up faster, you stiffen it up and yeah. it does its job. It's, it's a 
yeah. damper. I, I love the adjustability uh, that for an overland vehicle because you're taking that weight on and pulling it off and putting yep. it back on. It, it's nice to be able to do that. So yeah, it really is. I'm a believer. <clears throat> yeah, and then there's a, a, a hydraulic bump stop yep. up front. A hydraulic bump stop is, is awesome because it, instead of you hitting bump hard and it bouncing mm -hmm. back, um, it comes in sooner. Right. So instead of, you know, being there, it starts here right. and it absorbs. It's that second shock somewhat. Um, so if you're going through heavier stuff, instead of it bottoming out and bucking back, the hydro bump takes it um, and keeps it really level. And that makes a, a world of difference when you're doing the higher speed stuff. But it also serves as the, the bump stop so that the shock doesn't bottom out. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great dual purpose for a build such as this. I paired it with a TerraFlex long arm in the front. Um, long arm in the rear is coming. It's, it's in R&D. Um, building a long arm for a truck, I'm sure, is yeah, a little yeah, bit more yeah. challenging than it is on a Wrangler. Uh, but when that comes out, I will definitely um, go long arm in the back. Long arm in the front made a, a world of difference. Once you get in those higher ride heights, um, you can only get so much out of a, an adjustable short arm. Right. You can only get so much caster and only get it so much into spec. So a long arm makes a big, big difference. Yeah. I noticed it the second I drove it around the block You know, by the shop. There's this big swooping turn. And I used to have a decent amount of body roll. And the first time I drove it, it just wasn't there. Wow. So that, that made it a big difference. And even with an anti-rock, which gives you more body roll than a stock sway bar. So a stock sway bar would be here on the firm scale. Mm -hmm. No sway bars over here. An anti-rock is somewhere yeah. closer to the firm side. Um, but it'll allow that suspension to fully articulate right. without disconnecting a sway bar or doing um, quick disconnects. Yeah. You don't have to press a button. You just... Right. You know, you could articulate the suspension right now and get everything out of it, which is really nice. You do get a little body roll, but there's downsides to, to sure. any upsides. So, yeah. Cool. What about uh, what about armor underneath? Have you done any armor underneath? It's coming. I uh, okay. I have our tech skids on the way. Okay. Um, I didn't do that out of the gate because I felt that there was other meat and potato mm. things that I needed to get out yeah. of the way. But our tech skids are coming because I, I really want to do Rubicon with this yeah. again. Um, I did Rubicon you know, five times with my JK, and it's, yeah. I, I still think that's the most fun trail yeah. um, out there. I've done Moab. It's it's beautiful, but Rubicon's just different. It's You're in the middle of the Sierras, yeah. no cell reception. Right. Forest. Um, yeah, and it's just a challenge of a trail. It's not the hardest trail, right. but it is, it's challenge after challenge after challenge, and it is, it's a blast for Jeeper. So I'm excited to take this limo through it uh, <laughs> i by jk I, i'd get it on the back fender yeah. and this thing's got another three feet You're attached right. to it's it so be a I'm, different <laughs> different uh, way of wheeling for yeah sure. i think I'll, I'll use the armor i think i'll get some pinstripes but man i i'm excited to do it I'm, I'm not worried about scratching it up and that'll be the purpose of those skids because you use them on the rubicon no matter what driver you are what suspension you have um skid plates get used on the rubicon because yeah, the boulders sure. are the size of mini coopers so Right. Yeah. Well, talking about the extra length of this vehicle, let's uh, let's walk back there and talk about the business end. Cool. So this truck is really one part rock crawler and one part overlander. I think we covered the rock crawler aspect of it. Let's yeah. talk about the overland aspect of it. Let's uh, let's start from the top and work our way down. What is that cool roof rack up there? Yeah. So this is our uh, Rebel Off Road Halo 2.0 rack. We've coined it the the LBR. Uh, we'll say it's the little boys rack. Uh, <laughs> it's a shorter version of our regular one. Okay. Um, I just wanted to do something different. Um, and you can pull the panels off on the other rack that goes further, but I kind of liked that look of a little stubby rack. Yeah. And so we made that one. People liked it, so now we offer it. So I've got some packs up there for fuel, which we used on that long trip. Yeah. I've got a couple waters, which is nice for doing dishes and that kind of thing. I've got a Pelican Storm case up there for uh, my free spirit lights for camp. So I keep that stuff up there. A couple um, like little blankets for camping. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things stay up there. I have the Pro 6, yeah. which it's a uh, it's the seven ring instead of the eight. It's a 45 inch bar that sits up there. Um, the hoop of the halo goes over it just yeah. perfect. Like it really, yeah. you know, a very noticeable difference yeah. of a rack. So it's not just your typical rack. Um, I, I love that thing. I'm, I'm really, really happy with with what's on it. You can add, you know, light mounts, antenna mounts, whatever you want. It is held on with uh, with some tracks from Thule. So you just, you mount those to the hard top um, and it's really easy to take the rack off. So say you wanted that rack off for the time being, unplug that light bar, 
um, eight bolts and you could take that rack sure. off. So that's, that's a nice feature about that. It's not a, you know, a big load bearing rack. You're not sure. putting a rooftop tent on it. It is, that's its job. Right. It carries some cargo, some gas cans, you know, luggage, whatever you want to put up there. Uh, speaking of tents. Yes. What tent are you running? So I, uh, I just recently put this on. So I went with the iCamper mini. Okay. Um, I went mini because I like the look of the half rack. I started with a full height rack, mm -hmm. um, but having the tent entirely above the vehicle brings some, some wind drag, some, some body roll, um, which isn't desirable on right. a long trip, especially if winds kick up. So I went with, uh, with our mid rack. I used to run the Rome Vagabond tent, mm -hmm. which is as good as it gets for soft shell tents. Right. I loved that thing. Space wise, that tent is better inside than this is. Okay. Um, but ease of setup and tear down was a huge draw for me to go yeah. to something like this. The, the Rome, I'd say on average, it took me 10 minutes to take up, yeah. set up stuff and take down. And on a 12 day trip like that, if you think about, you know, going from a 10 minute setup to a one minute setup, nine minutes here and there, 18 yeah. minutes a day, 12 days. And we're talking hours yeah. that are saved. And after a long day of wheeling and, and driving, getting to camp is it's nice to just set up camp and be done I, i'm 100 so percent with you I, you would know that better than anybody 100 percent. i know so. i get it I, I i think i think for somebody that is going to just you know a couple times a year they're going to go camp with their family or whatever i think a soft shell is a great way to go because you're not spending a ton of money yeah. it's not a big deal but when you're on multi-day trips hard yeah. shell is Set, it's worth setting up tearing down moving yeah that's hard with a soft shell yeah. i mean that's a it's an ordeal to do that it takes the the fun out of it you're not like yeah, let's go move. It's, it takes some time. So having a hard shell where you could just pop it up. I mean, if you don't set up the pop out windows, mm -hmm. this is less than a minute. Right. Yep. And then tear down is probably about the same. Nice. Um, and that's, that's huge. Cool. That's, that's nice. So I'm really, really happy with it. And what do you got so, it mounted to? Uh, I've got that mounted to our Rebel Off-Road Explore bed rack. Okay. I'm obviously biased, but we built a bed rack because there wasn't a bed rack that we wanted to run. Yep. Um, and that's not a knock on any other company out there. So we did little things like um, we've taken the entire bed for our bed rack. Most of the bed racks you see out there, they end here because that's where the bed, the factory rails end. So they think, okay, we can only build a bed rack to there. Well, we just designed our, our mount to be exactly the same as the top of the bed rail. So it actually goes all the way. Yeah. Um, and in the back as well, the design we made, it bolts here and the flat plate contours the top of the bed rail and it goes all the way to the back. So you're maximizing every inch of space sure. in your bed rather than having your bed rack in here and you got this big gap that you can't do anything with. Yeah. So it's really cool. We've got uh, tons of accessories that from other manufacturers and of our own that work specifically with this rack. We've come out with a bike mount. So you throw your mountain bike on the side of this thing. Yeah. Um, it's it's awesome. Cool. Underneath, we'll get there, but we've got a table mount that mounts yeah, underneath. Yeah. So we tried to think of you know, all those fun accessories that we would want to use. Um, and then we just go, we can make that. Yeah. So we do. Cool. So that's, well, that's very purposeful. It's a lot yeah. of cool stuff mounted to it. Yes. Uh, let's talk fenders because we didn't cool. talk about it up front. What yeah. fenders are you running? Uh, same as the JK. Okay. Because I love them. <laughs> um, I, I'm running Nemesis Industries flares. Yeah. These guys make the best quality fender flare. Yeah. It's made out of aluminum, um, which is great. Nice and light, but the selling feature for me is just how well yeah. these things fit. I mean, you, you go and you nitpick how they fit yeah. and they're perfect. And, uh, and unlike the stock ones, uh, rocks probably don't get stuck in there. No, yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Thanks, Jeep. Uh, <laughs> no, so they, they just, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Other, you, specifically that front flare, it's just, it has such a nice, unique, you know, kind of factory flare look to right. it. Um, so you're not just going to this hardcore tube flare look. It's like you've got a high clearance, flat, aluminum, factory-ish flare. And I like that you did the silver on top, but it's yeah. black underneath. I like that. Yeah, just keeping the, the inner fender all black. Yeah. Um, I'm running, I've got Nemesis, I mean, uh, Artec rear inner fenders there. I've got okay. Nemesis up front. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm beyond happy with these things. They just, uh, I, I really think they tie so much of this, you know, look together. The color match gives it that nice factory. Yep. Ish look. What uh, what slider is over there? Uh, these are the rock slide engineering step sliders. Okay. Same as on the JK. Um, functioning rock slider. 
So I can I wield Rubicon with these every time that I did, and you use them, you pivot on them, you land on them, and then you open that door and they they drop down, right. you know, full like 12 inches. So and it's you, a and huge you need that time. when you're so tall. Yes, when you <laughs> lift your Jeep, it's not like there's, you need a ladder or so, uh, something to get in there. So they're they're awesome. Um, they have a light when you open it up, so you can see where you're stepping. Yeah. They've got an additional armor plate that you can put on there. So if you are harder on that step and you're worried about it not functioning. There's a, uh, an easy bolt-on skid plate that goes there, which is huge. I think you know most Jeep owners already know about yeah. these just because they're, they're such an innovative product. I mean, Jeep industry can be pretty stagnant and they just adapt to the vehicle, whereas Rock Slide came out with something that nobody had done before. Yeah. I mean, a, a rock slider that drops down, right. that's, that's huge. If you are crawling with it and just repeat it, repetitively gonna hit something, they have a, a kill switch in it. So bottom of the dash, you turn that off the step doesn't deploy. Nice. So if you're on Rubicon, right. I turn them off and yeah. I hop in and out of my vehicle, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, but that way you don't forget that the step is down because your door didn't fully close and you rip that step right. off and um, yeah. yeah, cool. It's, it's a great, great, great product. And I'm happy with them. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's hop around to the rear. Let's drop the tailgate. Let's see what's back there. Deal. All right, paint match bumper back here. Yes. What do you got? So funny story on that one. I mean, obviously I paint match everything. Um, but I powder coated this bumper black because I was going to go black bumper. Uh, you know, I'm going to be stepping on it, that kind of thing. Came back from powder coat black. And one of the guys is like, why didn't you paint match that? You totally should have paint matched that. I was like, dang it. So <laughs> bumper went to paint. Yeah. Um, I kept the little, the steps in the side over here, powder coated black, because you're going to step on those. We have a, a tread plate that goes on top of the bumper. Okay. So you'll step on that. You know, I'm probably going to scratch the bumper, but it's it's a Jeep. So, yeah. um, but the bumper itself is our our Summit Series rear bumper for the JT. It's a full width. It's got plenty of room to step on top of it. It's mm -hmm. got footholds just like a Chevy truck does in the corners yeah. that you can jump up here, get on top, set up your tent, get on top of you know a full height rack, whatever it might be. Once again, uses a couple of uh, two by two lights. We're using the G34 again because yeah. it just fits so nice tow plug is up here rather than below like mm -hmm. some of the other bumpers yeah. which is just asking to be smacked Great. um license plate lights are actually in the bolt here so that lights up that plate perfectly nice. um, a couple of big three quarter inch shackles here so that you got toe points they're welded behind as well so they're extremely strong cool. so to go along with the bumper we've made a uh, a slider step which is you know similar to what Jeep came out with yep. on the Rubicons. We've just made a bigger, bulkier, sure. heavier duty version of it. Really strong, you can land on it, slide on it, bolts right onto the stock location. Um, we just went with little details where it, it lines up perfectly with the bumper. Um, so we, we yeah. feel that we knocked it out of the park. Once again, totally biased, but um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I had a hand with Bond and Evan and those guys designing the bumper and it's, you know, what do we want it to be? You know, if somebody doesn't already have the product out there that we want with a step and all that stuff, we have the opportunity to fill a void. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about what you got going inside the truck bed back here. Cool. So, uh, yeah, drop the tailgate. Cool little uh, side feature that I, I think I got from a, a Tacoma owner. Cool. Um, Mountain Hatch makes this guy right here. Yeah. So the factory tailgate's got ridges mm -hmm. in it. So putting a stove or a yeah. you know, coffee maker or something like that on there is a little bit of a balancing act. So they make this... Uh, little PVC cutting board right here. It's got a little, you know, a couple cup holders, but yeah. really having, you know, this is virtually a table yeah. stock on the vehicle. So making that a, a flat surface for a stove. And I made coffee every, every morning off the back of this on our trip. Um, it's, it's a cool little, yeah. you know, cool little plug on this thing. I, so I I'm it. happy with that. Cool. You got the amber light stuff here. Yeah, man, these couldn't have come in any more handy on that 12 day trip. Yeah. Like the dust mm -hmm. in some of those States was insane yeah i mean i haven't i haven't seen dust like that even at like johnson valley which is a dust bowl so this was nice with my s pod you can do a strobe feature so you, you hit that twice and they go they strobe just like a, a cop light so um this was the only thing that was visible oh yeah for the yeah. guys that were behind me and then you know bond and evan in front of me their lights that's all i could see right i mean i couldn't see a tail light when it was you know pressed they're 10 feet away invisible yeah. i could and not see them it's super important because especially if you're you know you're you know you've got a good pace going down and if the dust is flying 
if somebody in front of you has to slow down for an obstacle or whatever, totally. you've got to be able to at least see something yeah. and to have that ambers makes, it does make a huge difference. A hundred percent would have been 10 fender benders yeah. if these lights weren't here. So those are, I mean, just awesome. And then accessory wise in here, fire extinguisher, mm -hmm. God forbid there's right. a fire on this vehicle, but um, H3R makes, you know, you, you spend money for a good quality fire extinguisher, but you know, your $20 Home Depot ain't going to cut it right. if the vehicle's on fire. Yeah. So, you know, a hundred bucks for a fire extinguisher that actually works, not a big deal. I've got my power tank over there. Oddly enough, I color matched it. Uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just trying to do something different. That's, that is a killer source of air. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll inflate this tire in no time. Yeah. I mean, it just, it goes, um, it's, it can run power tools, which a, an ordinary compressor, unless it's huge is not going to do that mm -hmm. so running an impact or uh, or an air ratchet or something like that is is really nice to be able to do with that i got a four gallon rotor packs in here okay mounted off the side i used that in the middle of wyoming mm -hmm. that was extremely handy to um to have back here i've got another four gallons up on the roof okay um, but having spare fuel is just is huge you never know where that trail is going to take you or that you get way off course or whatever it is and getting stranded is kind of a problem and, and let's so. be honest your fuel mileage is probably not great no. no no i'm i'm <laughs> i'm happy to be in the tens so <laughs> it's a good place to be yeah. but any jeep owner other than you <laughs> knows knows diesel what, baby yeah diesel. anybody knows what the low teens are yeah and you're you're doubling those yeah. so what uh what size fridge you got so i have a uh, a dometic cfx 355 i had their 50 before and uh i was really happy with it I'm I'm a sucker for latest and greatest. Yeah. And the operating system is just a little bit nicer. The app that you can use it makes ice, mm. which yeah. is just like cool. come on. I mean, yeah. You know, end of a hard day. Once again, you sit around the fire. If your cocktail has ice in it, yeah, that's that's great. So makes ice. Um, it's got a couple compartments. So on that trip, we had you know vegetables to the top, sure. meats to the top. You know, all your butters and cooking yeah, stuff yeah. in there, um, and that was awesome. Um, I've got it on there their fridge slide okay. um little plug on our product which i once again i'm biased but we make a a bolt-in fridge mount so this fridge mount is bolted to the bed rail in two spots so it's got a bolt there mm -hmm. and a bolt back there and if you wanted to take this fridge out you undo two bolts and the entire fridge comes out of the vehicle it's and not bolted to the bed not bolted to the you bed you didn't have to drill your bed to do that no i didn't so wow, you, you might go oh, I'm, I'm not going to take the fridge out but the amount of times I've made a Home Depot run or a, I got a new TV right when I got my Jeep, yeah. um, I pulled this out because I needed the other 70% of my bed. So uh, I was I was able to do that. So it's that's a nice feature. Yeah. The fridge comes out, no problem. Um, it comes out far enough yeah, yeah, to where yeah. you can actually open this and not hit the bed rack, which is perfect. awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really. Happy. Now you've got a little custom thing going on with power over there. What have you done? Yeah. So once again, I got the a sport. So getting a sport with the 110 in the back is is few and far between. It's a special order kind of thing. So I uh, I got the Amazon special, went on, found a little flush mount block setup. It's got uh, you know on and off, so I can just turn the power, cut it. It's got two USBs. It shows the voltage of my accessory battery, which is huge. So you know what that's uh, that's down at. And then it's got the uh, the 12 volt down here, yeah. which is really nice. Um, that's constant power straight to that accessory battery. So, on factory ones, when it gets to a certain voltage, it says, "Hey, I'm I'm done. We're gonna we're gonna kill the battery." Yep. This doesn't know any different. Uh, another cool thing on the fridge is obviously that's the main draw electric wise. Um, it's got a low voltage cutoff, so you can change that from a low, a medium, a high, mm -hmm. um, to where it says, all right, if I go below 13, I'm shutting off. If yeah. I go below 12, right. I'm shutting off. 11, I'm shutting off. So yeah. with a uh, with a dual battery and an AGM battery, you can set that really low. Yeah. I mean, you can just, uh, yeah. I'll kill that battery before the fridge turns off, but I'm not worried about it because my starter battery is fresh. I can jump it, start it, charge it real fast, and, uh, and move on. But once you go fridge, you ain't going back. Oh, no, no. Like, no, who sure. who deals with wet food? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. just... Yeah, that's once you've gone to a fridge and you're spoiled, it's it's such a yeah. a huge perk to just keep stuff cool. You've got so. a, it's a great little setup. And I'm even noticing the propane tank, which is... That's yeah. a really good spot because if your stove is right here, you yeah. just plug into that guy, too. And, you, yeah. of course, color matches. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so I got... I have a propane uh, yeah. hose that goes there. I hook yeah. it up to this guy. 
Um, it goes right here for, for stove, scottle, whatever yeah. it might be. Um, you can tee it off so that you're running two at the same time. It's a, it's a five pound tank. So that's, you know, a good chunk of those little green ones. Yeah. You know, I've got 10 of those sitting in my camping boxes you and know. you're always checking to see which one's full and yeah. you run out of them. So this is nice. You take it to a gas station, fill it up right. and you're good to go. It lasts so forever. that's great. I, right. It does. I only used, you know, on a 12 day trip, probably 30, 40% of that. I haven't filled it yet and I've yeah. used it multiple times since. So that's that's really nice. Not worrying about it. Fill it up, and it lasts a long time. Perfect. So that's uh, awesome. that's a, a nice little feature. Last one is our, our table, table mount that I was talking about. So it's hidden up there, okay. but just one of those those cool products that we were like, well, what if we mounted a table up there? It's totally out of the way. Right. All your camping gears in there, but you just you pull two pins, pull this table out. It's four foot with a, an extension for a uh, stove. It's got a paper towel holder. It's made by Lifetime, and it's just such a handy camping table. That I use that every single time I camp. So that's, that's really cool. cool. I love it. It's a great setup. Thank you. So your interior is a little unassuming, but you've done quite a few things in there. Can you talk us through it a little bit? Yeah. So I wanted to keep the interior, you know, somewhat subtle, um, but have substance to it. So um, I didn't want to just have things mounted all over the place for the sake of having, you know, screens and radios and and all that so i kept it really simple for a cb and for a race radio i went handhelds um so i actually keep those just in the back i have them handy but i freed up space to just make this thing comfortable on the inside not have things you know hit me in the side of the head and all that so um, i've got a rock hard sport cage in here it is more of a, a brace than anything it braces the a pillar here bar goes back here to the b pillar um, and just gives you a some additional strength in the case of a, a flop or a rollover or whatever it might be. Um, I also flush mounted my S pod here. Uh, one of the guys fabricated a plate that goes in here. All the wires are completely hidden, run through the tubes. Super clean. So it's just, it, you don't, you see nothing. It's, yeah. it's totally hidden, but I've got my lights under control. I, uh, I did not get factory leather. I, uh, I had the cloth seats, which, uh, they get dirty so fast. So I went with a, uh, a seat cover of all things, which you'd never guess, but PRP makes these seat covers and it's a vinyl, but they honestly look better than factory leather. In my opinion, they knocked it out of the park. Um, they made a, uh, a matching piece here for the center console, which is really, really nice. I got the middle of the road radio, which, um, I love music. I love, you know, tactile touching stuff. Um, good nav. So I went with the um, Alpine radio. It's the nine inch restyle. And that's, that's awesome. Another reason I went with a sport, I didn't, I didn't pay for the higher end radio and spend 1800 bucks on that. Um, that still lacks some of the features that this comes with. So big screen, it's got Apple CarPlay. It's got great off-road nav. You click, uh, off-road on the screen. It does trail mapping, um, inclimometer and all that jazz. So that's a, a great, great radio having a huge backup camera is really really nice the ability to add a front camera is great so i'm i'm really happy with that um on my auxiliary switches i've got my arb dual compressor which is mounted underneath uh, the back seat back there i run uh my arb lockers front and back and i can uh, air up and down or air up but uh yeah i've got a little a little safe here in the console which is is nice for valuables and loud items and uh that that's for the most part what I've got going on in the inside. Like I said, I wanted to keep it yeah. pretty mild um, and not, not ask for problems. Yeah. So. Well, you've done a great job, man. It looks really clean. It looks really factory in there, which I really yeah. like. Yeah. Nice Thank job. you. Well, man, once again, just an amazing build, dude. You, you really have got this dialed in. You know how to do it right. What is, what's top of mind on something you've got to do next on this truck? Well, like I said, I've got, our tech skids coming. Yeah. That's a necessity. If I want to do Rubicon, um, I need skids. So that belly pan just covers everything, yeah. all the valuables underneath between TK, soil pan, transmission, shafts, um, all that. So that's, I mean, realistically that's coming in the next month or so. Yeah. Uh, I ordered it. So it's, it's coming. Um, and then I've got to do steering. So I've got factory steering, which on JLJT having that electronic assist, is is great uh, i don't think with a jk that i could turn a 15 and a half 40. um so psc hydro assist is coming i want to do rubicon i 
don't think I could make it through that trail with this. You know, you get bound up in rocks and the wheel just will not move. Right. So yeah. um, hydro is coming for sure. I'd say that's bucket list in the next, you know, six months or okay. so. It has to happen. Around town, you'd be actually surprised at how easy I can turn a, a 40. Yeah. I thought I wouldn't be able to drive it down the road when I built it originally. I said, I was, there's no way that you're turning a 40, 1550 without right. hydro, as did a lot of guys. But, you know, they went and drove it. And with that electronic assist, it's actually pretty surprising at how fluid it moves. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to those. I think those will be really good mods to do. And then I'm sure I'll find a hundred other things. It's a, it's a Jeep. So <laughs> it's always tinkering, right? Always, always, always. Okay. So what's, uh, what's the next big adventure this thing will be going on? <sighs> My wife and I have been talking about Idaho. Yeah. I watched some documentary on uh, on uh, Netflix about Idaho. It's just titled Idaho, <laughs> and it was an hour and a half of Idaho. Yeah, and it just looked awesome. And having a vehicle that you can drive out there, drive on all sorts of terrains, park it, um, is is awesome. So we've got a, a baby girl on the way, so uh, we're gonna try and knock that trip out first. But she's gonna come along with yeah. us. We'll we'll get her equipped, and uh, and go on some some trips with us we're going to start her young get her camping yeah. enjoying the outdoors and it's but it's all about man a family making memories uh, yeah yeah that that's awesome dude and what a what a vehicle a jeep is just like to me it's always been the vehicle that you you go and make those yeah. memories with so awesome. i'm i'm beyond excited so awesome, yeah man. well thanks buddy uh yeah for coming out today i i really appreciate you taking the time to yeah. uh, letting us look at this again well off script for you um Thank you so much for what you do. Um, like, I, I know so many people appreciate it, but I've done this for, for 15 years now. I've seen so many different people come and go through the industry and, and try and make a video and do it for the wrong reasons. You know, I'm making this to get free stuff, and that is not you. Um, you make awesome content for people. Um, they thoroughly enjoy it. Once again, I've done this for so long, and I don't typically go home after work and want to watch more Jeep stuff. I do that all day i talk about jeeps all day but i go back and i watch your content and it's it's so good um it's so genuine it's enjoyable and yeah oh. thank you seriously well thanks man I, I appreciate that i did not pay him to say that so thank you buddy i appreciate it man absolutely i cannot wait to hit the trail with you on this rig it's uh let's do it be awesome guys i hope you have enjoyed uh checking out this video uh definitely if you're in the area rebel off road will do you right if you need some work done uh and i'll leave uh, their information down in the link below uh thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video